I, got, I, I always keep something in my bag. Yeah, Let's cool. See. It's like certain things that have to go in there. Right, you of know, course. Um, and it could be aliens that are digging it up too, so that's, That's you know. the other thing. People have said, I'm that person to call. If, if aliens came to Atlanta, <laughs> and, but, but, and they no. need to know Atlanta. So Fabo of D4L, yeah. Laffy Taffy, these were the glasses that he wore. The term itself, AT aliens. Yeah. You know, how different and eccentric we are. You, this definitely has to go in the capsule, right? Uh, early TI, this is the sampler. This is yeah. Killer Mike's first major single, Equimini. I remember these. Soldier Boy, right? And you see the glasses. Yeah. I have the original glasses no that way. came with it. And you know, Little John, he created a genre here in Atlanta. Crunk music. Yeah. So this is certain things that I, we're gonna have to just represent Atlanta. You are the guy. I'm the, they call me, you know, the Indiana Jones of Atlanta. Here I am as a kid. Now I'm a washed up pro snowboarder, dad, and curious food nerd, hell bent on new adventures. I'm Josh Rosen. Food and adventure have led me to some of the most interesting places. So we're off on a mission to source the freshest ingredients, all while taking it in through the lens of the locals. And each adventure ends with a feast. This is Dirt. We're back in the dirty south, birthplace of Martin Luther King Jr home of Varsity Chili Dogs, Peaches and Peanuts, Magic City, Starlight Drive-In, and some of the finest roller rinks in the world. Welcome to Atlanta, everyone. We are in South Atlanta, Zone 3, Cleveland Avenue. Once a quiet, idyllic neighborhood on the outskirts of Atlanta, it's now known as the birthplace of trap music, where boarded up windows and strip malls are more common. But there is progress in the air. Rated one of the best new restaurants in the world by Time Out Magazine, Shea Butter Jones sits right here on Cleveland Avenue in this gas station parking lot. And our chef for this episode, Malik Rassan, and his wife Dee are the ones in charge. NYC transplants living in Atlanta for the last 18 years. That's a New York bacon, egg, and cheese. One thing's for certain, New York is still in their blood, and they brought those flavors back here to the neighborhood. And this is where I come dancing into your story. Oh, he opened it oh, dancing with them. That's, 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 that's Atlanta. It, that's, that's it. You got it. Malik. Malik, nice to meet you. Hi, Josh. I'm Dietrich. Boss Lady Dietrich. Nice to meet you. This is Cleveland Avenue. If you want to know Atlanta, this is it. <laughs> I'm from New York City, I'm from Queens, New York. Okay. I, I'm the kid that would get fried chicken wings from the Chinese restaurant and matzo ball soup from the Jewish deli. Beautiful. And then you take the chicken wings and put it in the matzo ball soup and bang. Yeah. Right? So that, that's how I grew up. That's beautiful. And that's what I wanted to bring to the city, right? So it's just a little bit of egg. This is gonna be like the most simplest thing you ever had. Malik will be the first to tell you that he didn't come up working in restaurants to get to where he is now. But his creativity is what people come back for. Like the Bermuda style codfish topped with fresh bananas. It's what he grew up with. Yeah. It's simple and delicious. That banana takes you it wastes somewhere. It, it takes it somewhere. Before entering the restaurant world, Malik was passionate about bringing the black community together through activism, even landing himself in the pages of Time Magazine as person of the year. Then came the food truck in Atlanta and the freedom to connect with people in a new way. People ask us to describe our food, and it's always been refined ratchet. It's ratchet, but more upscale. And Malik's famous smashed lamb burger with caramelized onions and whipped feta is top of the menu. Everything else changes daily. The lamb burger, that shit's slamming. That's, that's what we stand on. Everything else is a co-star. I call it like a meal on a bun. Like, you know, we come from a food truck, so everything had to be fast. To me, the main ingredient in this restaurant and in a lot of places is the people. Without the people, the ingredients mean nothing. Appreciate you, brother. We came with this thing like farm the block, right? And farm the table. Farm, right? I hear you, but I need you to yeah. know that it's the block. From farm to the block not only means just the farm, right? Yeah. It means we bring goodness to the block. Without the people, ingredients mean nothing. Now let's go meet the people. No one epitomizes how people make a place more than the man we're about to meet. So this one is mine, this one is mine. Yeah. The 61 Impala over there in the corner that's disassembled is mine. I bought it from Big Boy. 
This is big boys, the 62 is his. Yeah, I just try to live in the mind of a nine year old, nine or 12 year old. I think that's all of us. Yeah. It's like a balance of like responsibility yeah. and still maintaining that like. Exactly, don't let the child in you die. Don't yeah. Meet Killer Mike. You know, the ingredients here are just like to me, the neighborhood I grew up in, I grew up in a all black enclave on the west side called the Collier Heights in the Adamsville community. And my, my neighborhood poured so much into me. You know, my principals, my teachers, my camp counselors, you know, the other kids in my neighborhood, we poured so much into each other. I just want to make us proud. And I don't have to go afar. I've spent the last 20 years of my life on planes, trains, and automobiles right. away from home. Right. So having the economic opportunity to bring all of that back home. And that brings us to the historic Edgewood neighborhood. Tree-lined streets, cafes and bars with murals reminding us of its history. In 1947, Martin Luther King delivered his first sermon at this Baptist church. And Killer Mike sent us to the spot that he opened a block away, one of his contributions to the neighborhood, the Swag Shop. Hey, welcome to the Swag Shop, Josh. Thanks, man. Go check out my guy Rob right here, man. If you know anything about me, I'm a little bit of a weirdo about my hair. So first, a quick shape up of my guy Rob an important first stop on our journey through Atlanta. What was the reason behind starting a barbershop? It's a social space for working class men. You know, like working class men don't necessarily play golf or tennis, so it's not like they can get places and talk. That was the place where I got to see other men in my community and just see debate and see discourse, and that's where I saw new trends start. Like, I can remember when people first started getting a box, high right, low left, that kind of shit. Yeah. I, you know, so it was, just, it was just always a dope social space. I always wanted to own one. Killer Mike, making this community a little stronger, one cut at a time. This place is for us, and it's for us and it's by us. We have been creators here. We have been the stewards of this legacy. We have been the participants and partnership into what made this little town in the middle of the Southeast into an international hub. And that inspires me probably more than anything in the world. Thank you so much for having us and taking, taking some time. Back down to zone three. Expressways divided the city in the 1950s. The Olympics and the Braves came and went, and the Summerhill neighborhood got pretty beat up after that. But leave it to a strong community of obsessed beer drinking cyclists to treat all that like a blank canvas. And that brings us here on this quiet morning to Halfway Crooks, a Belgian style brewery that's become the focal point of this newly revitalized neighborhood. It's 9 a.m., can I please have a beer? Sure. sure. One sip of this frosty pilsner the size of a baby's head shows me why. <laughs> it's really good. looks good on you. Yeah. The door into the brewery says courage and patience in Dutch. Good words to live by when you're brewing beers every day. Today we're brewing pilsner, a lager beer that can be temperamental and takes a lot longer to brew than most. Hops are added late in the kettle boil to create a desired bitterness and aroma. Clean, crisp, traditional beers. These dudes are obsessed with lagers. And it shows. Yeah, who is this? Is she like the knee jerk of the brewery? Yeah, people ask if it's like Sean's or my grandmother, but it's just to find in a thrift store. Yeah, I mean, we, we built this place around community and that's one of the reasons our aesthetic is the way it is. We wanted to have this place feel really cozy, like a second home. Beer halls have been the cornerstone of communities since the dawn of time. Summerhill just got part of its soul back. Thanks for the beers, dudes. Signs of an ever-evolving city, microbreweries, and adult kickball leagues. A quick trip to Virginia Highlands to the beautiful Kinship Butcher and Sundry to grab meat for Malik's famous burgers. Hey Josh, how's it going? Welcome to Kinship. Pleasure. If I could change this store into my personal refrigerator, I would. Meat and fancy groceries. Yes, please. The lamb we're picking up here, as well as their meats, are butchered and cured right here. You know how suckers drive Lambos? No suckers here, only lamb bros. <laughs> Thanks for that sweet, sweet lamb, my dude. This is the Beltline, 
What used to be 22 miles of railroad tracks encircling the entire city is now being transformed into bikeable pathways, connecting a ton of different communities. Not long ago, Atlanta had been rated among the least bikeable cities in America. Now, that's changing. The spot feels straight out of an urban planner's handbook. Custom bags, modded bikes, and hot pizza. We're here at Spindle Bike Shop in the Old Fourth Ward. Sitting right off the Beltline, this is another important hub for Atlanta's vibrant bike community. Meet Tara, the leader of the Mob Cycling Club, who's taking us on a ride through the city today. Really, with Mob, we're just a collective of folks who like to ride. Yeah. Like-minded individuals, hopefully. When I started riding, again, as an adult, I did not see a large representation of people who look like me, and yeah. women, even less. So that's pretty much why I started, because uh, when I go to other cities and ride, it was very diverse. Yeah. So Atlanta being such a hub of African Americans, one would think it would be more, there'd be more representation. Sure. So now there is, yeah. but 12 years ago, there really wasn't that much. And so you continue to invite people in and it grows and it grows. And then we throw events, parties, races, rides, all of those good things. Let's go, let's go enjoy your lovely city. Let's go! <laughs> Atlanta is a city continually transforming itself and dreaming up new ways to draw folks together. We've only just begun our exploration of this place and have already witnessed how these forward-thinking locals are fueling the city through food, music, cycling, and art. It's the beating heart of the city. The most important ingredient? You guessed it. The people. Now that we've met the block, it's time to go to the farm. So pack up your knapsacks, we're heading to the country. The volume is a little lower out here. Between Atlanta and Savannah, our next city stop is miles and miles of industrial farmland, mostly cotton and peanuts. A whole lot of peanuts. This is true Jimmy Carter country, where 40% of all American peanuts are produced. Know where your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches come from, people. It's not industrial farms all throughout, though. Here in Pitts, Georgia, a small batch industry is emerging. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Clay Oliver at Oliver Farms grows sunflowers, then lets them dry out so he can harvest these little nuggets right here. They're wonderful seeds. These seeds are then turned into nutrient-rich oil. Trying to play it cool, knowing I'm about to go ride in this incredible machine my childhood dreams accomplished. One of the most common methods of extracting oil is to use a chemical process where okay. they would add hexane to the oil. Hexane will burn off at a lower temp than oil. Hexane is a component of gasoline. Sunflower oil gets a bad rap for its industrialized processing. That's why they are doing it differently here. First, the sunflowers grown here are top quality. Almost nothing better on a road trip. So what do you do that's different than that? We take, uh, it's a very old principle, you, you use friction and pressure to extract the oil. So what we hear of is cold pressed oil mm -hmm. or low temp pressed oil. It's just using some modern technology for those older principles. Clay's oil is processed without chemicals and at low temperatures, and the final product is bursting with flavor, color, and nutrients. Quick grain shower in my canopy, and it's time to ramble onward to Savannah. It's full on MTV Spring Break 1996 energy around here. So far into kitsch that it's a real thing. A diet is all about balance, so it's time to grease our innards with good old boardwalk shrimp shack and wash it down with a vodka slushy, the color of something definitely not found in nature. Remember Brian from the butcher shop? He and his chef buddy Chino are going to be our guides for our next couple of days on the coast. Hey, Josh. Josh. I don't think we can go wrong hanging with two young, wild Georgia loving chefs. So uh, right now we're in Forsyth Farmers Market. It's a year round Saturday market. A collective of mushroom foragers, growers, fishermen, uh, artisans. So just kind of like a really cool vibe to come to on Saturdays. 
Just 18 miles from the Atlantic Ocean, a marvel of ancient Greece-inspired urban planning, it's full of integrated, walkable neighborhoods with tons of green space. Coastal Georgia, aka the land of shrimp, Shrimpsburg, big shrimpin'. Shrimposphere. These grassy marshes and brackish waters are what makes the coastline so special. This nearly 400,000 acres provides habitat for some of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. It's real, baby, it's real. There you go. Fishing for redfish is a common pastime here. Beyond listening to Georgia football on the radio and having a few cold ones, the real end goal for our mission today, to come here. Osaba Island. <laughs> today, we're going on a safari through 2,600 acres of uninhabited heritage preserve, accessible only by boat. See the butterflies. Caffeinated yopon leaves line the single road that crosses this remote island. And zebra donkeys roam free. An abandoned artist colony is ours to explore. Kate reached out to me about you know, my experiences on the Georgia coast and what I thought would be really good for this show. It was the first thing I thought of. Uh, it's really the most pristine environment for finding any kind of worthwhile ingredients to bring back to the city. All right, now this is starting to feel like a real safari. And we're in gator country. Pigs streak through the old oak trees like ghosts drifting throughout the island. Crab pocket. They're not going to crawl out? No, I'm going to close it. Okay. They're trying to. That's okay. what cargo pants are for. The only use. <laughs> Keeping the crabs this in. This one is really interesting. Holy shit. That's way better. Yeah. But are you sure that's eatable? Well, we're in there now. <laughs> it's a sea succulent. It's called a sea bean. Foraging was good here. It's time to head back to the cabin and make some dinner. Just one little bumpy spot. Oh, no, uh, shit. Go, go, go. Go. <laughs> All right. Pro tip, when your car gets stuck in the mud, a rusty crab trap and a log tied to your tire is your friend. Hold on, let me just get a little, uh, this thing out a little bit. Six people pushing also seemed to help. <laughs> This is a young one. A little puppy drum. That's what they call baby redfish. The best part about island adventuring with two chefs should be pretty obvious. I mean, a lot of people don't know much about Osaba because so few people come here. Uh, we really just kind of cherish and respect the space here and the land. Um, and you know, we're gonna enjoy the bounty that we've gathered from it today. Asaba was everything these two chefs love most about Georgia. It's a wild place where their love for gathering beautiful ingredients and cooking great food that brings people together is fully realized. Get some dry aged beef fat. Uh, we got a flounder crudo from the flounder that we caught yesterday with roasted ahi dulces, raw ahi amarillos, both from Chino's garden, some olive oil, lots of lemon juice, and some of the muscadines that we are scuppernong, sorry, that we got at the uh, farmer's market yesterday. Did you get the crudo? This is so wonderful. If you recall, our chef's restaurant for the episode is called Shea Butter Jones. Honoring the name, we're bringing them back the best damn butter in the state, courtesy of Banner Butter. Our wrapping machine is called Andre 4000, because he's the second fastest rapper in all of Atlanta. 
He feeds onto Stacy labelums, which puts a label on top and seals it up. Uh, our original fermentation tank was Tank Aaron. Uh, and our first churner, which was much smaller, was uh, Ted Churner. Our second fermentation tank that we got, which was huge for us at the time, is Big Boy. Whey is a byproduct of butter making, so we're loading it up. I think we know some little guys that will love it. Now we're getting into the hills, soft and rounded and older than all get out hills. We're not done farming yet. This is Riverview Farms, up by the border of Tennessee. Awkward posing. This is Charlotte, okay. a former scientist who fell in love with a chemistry classmate at UGA whose family farm needed saving. They'll stop in a minute. The reason we feed our pigs whey is because it's full of protein, and pigs need lots of protein. So they moved to rural Georgia, diversified crops, introduced organics, and brought back animals. Now she's raising kids and pigs. Chef Malik said no pork on this episode. So instead of eating pigs, we're cuddling them. Right? Right spots? Oh! <laughs> this pig shat on me. They now have a direct consumer business and a story they can sell to Hallmark if they ever need to. Atlanta is their biggest market. sizes, cornmeal, then polenta, and then grits, grits being the finest. Don't tell us we didn't ever teach you anything. Hooey! Bounty galore. Now, we got one done. And their son insisted on sending us off with a tune. Thanks, fam. This is the most southern tip of the Appalachian Mountains, or is it Appalachian? The towns are cute. Hey, there's a barbershop. Welcome to Ella J, the mountain biking capital of Georgia, right at the base of the Chattahoochee National Forest, the largest protected forest east of the Mississippi, as well as the deepest reservoir. Hit bits. Someone said these are the oldest mountains in the world. Those are actually in South Africa, but these ones sure aren't hurting for maturity. Trails are fun, single track, no berms. Challenging. Look at that silvery blue. Hey. Hey, Josh, good to see you, Howard. Nice to meet you. Welcome to LJ Mushroom. Wow. Come on in. Beautiful. So this house is full of shiitake mushrooms, as you can see them growing off this log. Yeah. And you'll harvest them, will you then, it'll continue to produce? Yes, these logs will produce for about two to three times okay. before we need to turn them into compost. Okay. Um, but if you had this at home, you could let this keep growing until it dissipated and decomposed. Because right. mushrooms are decomposers and they'll just break down. When the gills start separating, like this, yeah. that's when you want to har harvest, it's the yeah. ideal time. When they're still tight, like this one. They're not ready. They're not ready. A little bouquet for Tosh. Howard, right, small my bouquet. I see a spider. <laughs> it almost got me. Howard credits the fresh mountain water for these mushrooms. I'm teasing. I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All right, let's go. Pizza's hot from the uni. Wine from the winery up the street. Tastes like pizza. <laughs> Where there are mountains, there is endless play. And although these guys might not be as grand as the Cascades of my home state, 
There is plenty of fun to be had here. Also, this North Georgia playground is only 90 minutes from Atlanta. What you waiting for? It's 5.30 in the morning, and we're back in South Central Atlanta for the race. My name is Taj Anwar Baul. Uh, we are in East Point at the race. The race is an event that is put together by the Running Nerds community. Yeah, everybody just out here having a good time, getting in shape, getting into fitness, a lot of things that black folks often aren't encouraged to do. So trying to kill all that diabetes, trying to kill all that bad health and just get into good health and fitness and getting in shape. So yeah, it's a, it's a great event. We heard about the race from Taj, a local firefighter chief who is an EMT here today. Taj is a good friend of the chefs and we'll be hosting our final feast this afternoon. First we sweat, then we feast. All right. There we go. I like simple. This is me all day. I'm coming in hot with your grits, ma'am. And it has a little short rib and a little collard green slaw. Now you, you can share if you like. Two cities, an island, mountains, and a forearm caked with pig shit. We're bringing the farm back to the block. A classic family barbecue with Shea Butter Jones at the helm, doing what he does best, bringing everyone together for a meal. Food tastes better when you know where it comes from. It tastes even better when you've seen the hands that pick the vegetables from the garden and talked with the men and women who grow these delicious things. Without the people, the ingredients mean nothing. Our final feast is overflowing with meaning. The range of experiences we've had here could boggle the mind if it weren't for the food and people right now tying it all together. Find the people find the ingredients, and the adventure will follow. Yeah.